please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, <clears throat> so first of all, um, so I'll discuss now Brownian motion in a local uh, field. Um, uh, we'll prove that Brownian, well, we'll discuss the fact that Brownian motion in a local field is a scaling limit. Um, so before we do anything, um, before we begin, I would like to thank the members of the organizing committee for the kind invitation. Uh, I thank the audience for your time. Uh, and I dedicate this talk uh, to the memory of my mentor, um, Professor V.S. Radarajan. Um, uh, he's a, a great mentor and a dear friend, and I miss him terribly. Um, so I, I just wanted to dedicate this, this talk to him. Um, so the, I'll start with some references. The study of diffusion in the Narakamedian setting has a long history. And I have a, some list of references here. This is very abridged. Um, it's just that these particular references um, uh, um, are, are closely, are, are important for the, the, the current talk. Um, so there's, of course, you, I don't think that I could begin a talk without um, discussing the, well, without mentioning at least the, the sum, this, this you know, very important, um, very prescient work of um, Professor Volovich. And then, um, and then of course, uh, the works of Professors Vladimirov and Volovich um, on piatic quantum mechanics and generalized functions. Um, and, um, and then, um, um, and then the, and then early work, of course, on uh, piatic Schrodinger type equations. Um, sort of the, the, the more, uh, the, the later work, um, uh, well, very early work. Um, the first work, I think, on um, um, that 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 gives rise to some of the things, that some of the questions I'm thinking of now. Um, it really starts with with these, and with, of course, the work of Professor Kotchebe uh, in 1992, and the work of um, Professors Albavarian and Kowalski in 1994. Um, the current work I'm looking at it really started. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to discuss and, and, and move some results um, that um, Eric Bakken and I had earlier to the setting where I can discuss the very general set, the very general kinds of um, uh, uh, path integrals that um, Professor Varadarajan discussed in his 1997 um, paper. So this is just um, um, some historical background. Um, uh, the, the paper, the initial paper that Eric Bakken and I wrote on this was uh, Piatic Brownian Motion as a Limit of Discrete Time Random Walks. This is um, in 2019. And then I've improved the result uh, last year. Um, so, so uh, we'll first discuss, we'll first have some small, some introduction. Uh, I'll give an overview. We'll talk about, uh, we'll, we'll give a fr general framework for studying scaling limits. Um, I'll relate this to the classical example in R. We'll then discuss um, the primitive piatic state space and its refinements, um, the primitive process and its generator. And then finally, we'll talk about the convergence of discrete time processes. So, So the fundamental solution of the diffusion equation in the real setting induces the Wiener measure uh, on uh, the continuous functions um, from the continuous paths in R. So the probability space for Brownian motion is the pair, uh, is the pairing between the, the continuous functions and the Wiener measure. So this is the, this is the, um, the probability space for Brownian motion. Uh, there is a sequence of probability measures PM on the Skorohad space. This is the Skorohad space uh, on R, such that each of these PM, each of the PM is the measure induced by a discrete time random walk on a grid in R, and the sequence PM converges to the Wiener measure in the weak star topology um, on the uh, bounded um, measures on the Skorohad space. So in this sense, Brownian motion is a limit of discrete time random walks on grids. So there are analogs of Brownian motion where paths are valued in a finite dimensional vector space over a division algebra that is finitely generated 
over a non-Archimedean local field. And this is coming from Bradrosh in 1997. The question is, is such a Brownian motion also a limit of discrete time random walks? So our newest results are in the general setting, um, but we will only discuss the QP setting here. I mean, this is obviously a complicated setting, um, uh, but the um, tools we use are robust enough that they can actually handle that, that generality. So the paper um, in 2019 by Bakken and myself partially answers this question in the QP setting, but with restrictions. So first in that paper, the Vladimirov operator with exponent, um, uh, the exponent was greater than one. Um, and that was due to technical limitations in our approach. We couldn't handle the case when B was, uh, was between zero and one, was bigger than zero uh, and possibly equal to one. So we only looked at the case when the exponent of the Vladimirov operator was greater than one. And the convergence, the convergence we found was uh, for any positive T, the weak star convergence in the space of bounded measures on the Skorohad space with time interval zero T. So we proved weak star convergence on compact time intervals. Uh, and so the question is, is to, can you go beyond compact time intervals? Um, can you and have weak star convergence for all time. And um, so the present work significantly expands and improves on the past work. Um, it simplifies the approach by reducing all calculations involving scaling pro scaled processes to calculations involving a single primitive stochastic process that has a discrete quotient group of QP as its state space. Um, the exponent is only assumed to be positive the convergence is a weak star convergence on the score hut space of paths on QP uh, with no restriction on the time. So the proof technique is robust and it promotes an extension to the very general setting um, of Varavarajan's 1997 paper. So we'll first establish uh, a framework for studying scaling limits in both the real and the piatic settings We'll introduce the state spaces at the primitive scaled and continuous processes. We'll establish the basic properties of the primitive stochastic process and upper bounds for some of its moments. We use the upper bounds to determine uniform upper bounds for certain moments of the scaled processes that imply that the family of measures associated to the scaled process is uniformly tight. Uh, and then uniform tightness of the measures and convergence of the finite dimensional distributions imply the main result namely that piatic Brownian motion is a scaling limit. And in fact, much more generally, um, you know, we, can, we can actually do more, um, we actually have much more general results. So, so let's lay down the framework for studying scaling limits. So first, uh, a continuous time interval is just an interval of the form zero T or zero infinity. A discrete time interval is a discrete subset of zero infinity that contains zero. And a time interval is either a continuous or a discrete time interval. So denote by fi of s, the space of all paths in s with domain i. s, you know, can be this, uh, I just think of s as the, is qp. Uh, so just think qp. Um, but it can be um, the more general um, setting of a finite dimensional vector space over a finitely generated division algebra of a non over a non-Archimedean local field. So a set omega is a path space of S if there's a time interval I such that omega is a subset of the space of all paths. Now, so an epoch for paths in omega is a strictly increasing finite sequence E that is valued in the time interval. Uh, a history is a tuple of the following form. It pairs a time point with uh, a Borel uh, subset of the space, um, and the finite and the finite sequence U, which consists of the right pairs of the um, uh, the right pairs of the entries in the history, um, is called the root. So you're pairing the history is a pairing, of course, of an epoch and a root. Okay, so we'll start with the definition. Let H be the set of all histories for a path space uh, omega. For history H, denote 
by C, the function that maps H to C of H, which is the set of all paths in omega um, that are valued in um, the, uh, that, that, that are uh, in a certain Borel set, uh, a certain uh, uh, place in the root uh, at the given time. So C of H is a set of all simple cylinder sets uh, of omega. And the set of cylinder sets is a sigma algebra generated by the set of simple cylinder sets. So this is, these are the simple cylinder sets versus cylinder sets. We'll generally look at the simple cylinder sets when making calculations. Okay, so in general, the fundamental solution to a pseudo different to a differential or pseudo differential equation. In the real case, we'll have a differential equation. In the piatic case, we'll have a pseudo differential equation. Uh, the fundamental solution will determine a probability density function. The probability density function determines in a straightforward way, the probability of a simple cylinder set and the pre-measure de determined by the PDF uh, extends to a measure P on the cylinder sets. So note that the pre-measure determines the probability uh, of a yes or no, of yes or no to a question of the following type. So if you have um, some Borel sets, like this, and we'll start, we'll just start at zero. Uh, this is U1, U2, U3, U4, and so on. You can ask, yes or no, is the path in here at time t1? Yes or no, is the path in here at time two, t2? Is it in here at t3? Is it in here at time t4? So if it's yes to all of these, we can calculate what the probability is that the path hits these marks at those times. So this is the question we're answering. Okay, so we will construct a consistent family of premeasures PM on the simple cylinder sets that extend to a prob probability measure on the score ahead space and that converge in the weak star sense to a measure P on the, on the, on the score ahead space. And the measure P will be a measure P that's, in do, that's, that's um, the me measure associated to a Brownian motion. Now these measures, the PM, will be associated to a random walk on a grid in QP. So let's define for each t the random variable yt that acts on the score hut space by evaluation of a path at time t. And the process, the, the stochastic process, maps, um, uh, maps i, to, uh, i cross the time interval cross the score hut space to um, the underlying set. So we curry variables to view y as a map from i to random variables acting on the score hot space by taking t to the random variable yt, which is just evaluation at time t. Okay, so we'll denote by ym the stochastic process on the probability space uh, where it's a score hot space, but with the measure pm induced by some uh, random walk that acts for each positive t as yt. So they act the same, but with different probability measures. The process Y, they'll act the same on, this, on the underlying space, but they're different probability measures. So the, prob the process Y is a limit of the YM if the measures PM converge to P in the weak star topology on the space of bounded measures on the score hot space. Okay. So it's nice to have some freedom in constructing um, the processes. So in constructing a random variable X or a stochastic process Y as given above, it is convenient to specify a law for X and then the finite dimensional distributions for Y without first uh, specifying a probability space on omega uh, on which X acts or a single probability space uh, on which each of the random variables defined by Y acts. So we refer to the construction of a law for X without actually specifying the function X as a construction of an abstract random variable X tilde. 
refer to the construction of the finite dimensional distributions for Y without actually specifying the stochastic process is the construction of an abstract stochastic process Y tilde. So a model for the abstract random variable X tilde or the abstract stochastic process Y tilde is just a random variable X with the same law as X tilde or a stochastic process Y with the same finite dimensional distributions as Y tilde. Now, our approach is to first construct random variables and stochastic processes, and then show that there are models for the abstract random variables and stochastic processes. The Kolmogorov extension theorem will guarantee the existence of a model for the abstract processes, and then moments for the abstract processes will guarantee the existence of a version of the model with CAD-like sample paths. So we will present below a unified framework for describing the finite approximation of both real and piatic Brownian motion by a sequence of discrete time random walks. So denote by F a field with absolute value, with this absolute, with, you know, with an absolute value under which F is a complete metric space. And we take F to be either R or for some prime P, the field QP. In both the real and piatic cases, there is a notion of a Brownian motion valued in F. Everything we're saying here can of course be extended to the very general setting. Now to define a primitive stochastic, uh, a primitive process S tilde, first we, we define a generator X tilde for the primitive process that is valued in a discrete group G. When I say primitive, I say primitive because I view it as being unscaled. We then scale it which is in the scaling is an embedding of a primitive uh, uh, of the uh, primitive process um, into, it, in some sense, it's like putting just a, a time or distance scale on what we're doing. So XI tilde is a sequence of independent abstract random variables with the same distribution as X tilde. And for each N denote by SN tilde, the abstract random variable, which is just a sum of, of this finite sequence. Um, oh, there's a typo here. The abstract process S tilde will have a model S. So a space scale is a strictly decreasing positive null sequence delta M with delta zero equal to one and a sequence of spatial embeddings of G with space scale delta is a sequence of injective functions gamma m from g to f that satisfy the following properties given below. So to simplify the statement of the properties for any g and g denote by dm of g the set of all points uh, in gamma m of g that are a distance of delta m from gamma m of g. So for every F in the field, so gamma one, the, property, the first property is that for every point in the field, there is a G in the primitive space so that gamma M of G is as close, is, is within delta M of the point of F. So we can get as close as we want um, to any point in the space. For every G in the group G, um, DM of G is non-empty, finite, and the cardinality of dm of g is independent of g. And for every g and g prime in g, if the points are too close, then it must mean that the original points were the same. Actually, in the real setting, you can divide this by two, but that's not necessary. Now, a space, a Sorry, a time scale. A time scale tau m is a strictly decreasing positive null sequence with tau, tau naught equal to one, and a sequence of spatiotemporal embeddings with time scale t, tau and space scale and spatial embedding gamma m is just a sequence yoda with yoda m mapping natural mapping the pair n g to n times tau m, and, uh, comma gamma m of g. So this is your point in the space and this is your time point. I just think about this as giving units in some sense in the real setting. So how many 
one step is how many seconds, for example. So any sequence yoda of spatio-temporal embeddings of n zero g into um, zero infinity f uh, across f with time scaling tau and space scaling gamma in induces a map on the primitive process in the following way. So we define the abstract process y tilde m as a process with continuous time interval in the following way. Right. So we take the floor of t over tau m and this gives us the number of steps it takes us to, um, to get to time t. In the cases we will study, bounds on moments guarantee that for each m, y tilde m has a model y m with sample paths in the score hot space that almost surely take values in the embedded grid. And for each m, define yoda m of s to be the process y m. So this is a bona fide stochastic process and it's the embedded process. Now, a measure PM on the cylinder sets of the score hut space gives rise to the finite dimensional distributions for the YM. For each M and each T, YTM acts on the probability space um, as evaluation at time T. For appropriate choices of the primitive process and the spatio-temporal embeddings, the sequence, of, uh, the sequence of measures PM converge in a weak star topology on the space of bounded measures on the score hot space to the probability measure P for a Brownian motion on P. And this will hold in the piatic or the real settings or in a, any non-Archimedean local field. So such a sequence of approximating measures exists for any Brownian motion valued in F. And in this precise sense, Brownian motion valued in F is the scaling limit of a, of a primitive discrete time random uh, walk on the group G. Okay, so let's look at the classical example just to uh, ground ourselves for a moment. So the field F is R and the group G is Z. X tilde is the abstract random variable uh, with this distribution um, going left by one step is probability a half, going right by one step is probability a half. Uh, let x i tilde be a sequence of independent abstract random variables, each with the same distribution as x tilde where i varies in the natural numbers. Um, and then take x zero tilde to be almost surely equal to zero. We just start at zero. And for each n n zero, denote by s n tilde, the abstract random variable, which is just the sum of um, n of these id random variables. So this is of course what it looks like. Here are the integer points and you just jump left or right with probability one half. And the idea is, is that you embed this into R by mapping one to one times delta M. So the space is just delta M. And that's the space scale. Okay, so now given any space scale delta M, define gamma M for each Z and Z by gamma M of Z is equal to delta M times Z. And given any time scale tau M, um, define a sequence of real spatiotemporal embeddings in the following way, exactly way that we, we have in general. Each embedding yoda m induces a mapping from the process s to a process indexed by continuous time and valued in r. And this is the spatiotemporal embedding of the actual process. For each non-negative t and each natural number m, we define the abstract random variable just as we do in general. We can compute the pre-measures defined by the yt tilde m on the simple cylinder sets. They extend to a measure, once again, we, that we denote by PM on the cylinder sets. And we define for each non-negative T, the random variable YTM that acts on the space, um, um, that acts on the space of all functions um, by YTM of omega equals omega of T, it's the valuation at time T, and the process YM is a model for Y t tilde of M. So this is given to us, this will be given to us by Kolmogorov extension theorem but we have control over the measures. 
So if we denote by, y, uh, by EM the expected value with respect to the measure PM, then if T1, T2, T3 is an epoch, then we have this moment estimate. And this estimate implies that there's a version of the process with samples, paths, and the score hot space. We refer to the same, this process again as YM, and then we define the spatiotemporal embedding of Yoda MS by Yoda MS equals YM. Now it turns out that if there's a positive constant D such as delta M squared over tau M tends to D as M tends to infinity, then the estimate given above is uniform in M and the uniform estimate implies the uniform tightness of the sequence of measures, uniform tightness and the convergence of the finite dimensional distributions um, of PM to those of the Wiener measure W with, with diffusion constant D together imply the weak star convergence of PM to W. So this is the complete story in in the classical setting with just random walks on the natural, on that, on, in the integers converging to Brownian motion. Um, so um, we now move on to the piatic setting. So for each M in the natural numbers with zero, denote by GM the quotient group of Q P by P to the MZP. So this is a discrete group. Uh, we denote by bracket M the quotient map of QP into GM. And we take this to be the absolute value. So um, it's just the absolute value of X if the bracket of XM is not zero and it's zero if the bracket of XM is zero. So for each element of GM, we denote the ball in the circle in this way. So this is the ball and this is the circle. This is the ball of radius M, this is the circle of radius M. Equals P to the K, and here the distance is less than or equal to P to the K. Just some notation. Okay, so we're going to denote by G, and this is the, we call the primitive space. Denote by G the group G naught and by the bracket, the quotient map um, to G naught. Um, we suppress, we just suppress the, uh, the index um, to compress notation. The group G is the state space for the primitive process for QP. Um, and the measure mu M on the group GM is just a counting measure, but scaled by a factor of P to the negative M. So in the case of G zero, it's just, there's no, the scaling factor is just unitary, it's just the, the unit. And so for each, for, so that for any integrable function F on GM, um, we have that the integral of F over the group um, is just equal to the sum, um, it's just, it's just this, this uh, discrete sum. Okay, so this is what uh, the primitive space looks like, um, not on Z, sorry, QP. There's a typo here, I should correct. This should read on QP mod ZP. And I sort of view this as, a, as like an atom. And I sort of view these things as, ener these as energy levels. And it, it helps to, I think, better understand the, um, the process that we'll construct. Um, we'll return to this picture in just a moment, but this is what the, this is one potential visualization of the, um, of the uh, primitive space. So we denote, denote by alpha M the group isomorphism that takes G to GM in the following way. And the mappings from GM into QP that we'll soon construct will permit these alpha M to actually be, view, be viewed as maps that refine the space, the state space. Now the group P to the negative N ZP is the Pontryagin dual uh, 
of the group GM and any element of GM is um, bracket XM for some X in QP. The canonical inclusion map taking P to the negative MZP into QP permits any Y in P to the negative MZP to just be viewed as an element of QP. So we define the, we define the dual pairing between GM and the Pontryagin dual. Uh, to, uh, we define this in the following way where this is just the usual character. on QP. So while the definition of the, um, I should say rank zero, that's this is the rank, a rank zero character on QP. So while the definition of the dual pairing uses specific representatives of the equivalence class, it, it turns out that of course it's independent of the choice of representative, which is easy to show. We have Fourier, we define a Fourier transform then on, um, uh, from L two G M to L two to its, to L two of its Pontryagin dual, uh, given in the following way by the dual pairing, and as well uh, an inverse Fourier transform. Now, for each Z and G M, there's an X in Q P such that Z is uh, bracket X M, and we can just pick a particular Z for each for for each X. Um, and this map is an injection from GM into QP, and this can be picked in any way we like, though it turns out we pick it in a specific way because it's nice to, but not necessary. So there are many possible sequences of injections from gamma M, uh, sequences of injections gamma M from G to QP that map G to grids in QP. And we just choose an injection that truncates a representative of an element of GM to the nth place. So that's how we do. So the sequence of grids is a sequence of refinements of grids that approximates QP in the sense that, um, that each is contained in, those, in the success of one and that their union uh, is dense. So the prop is that we have a proposition we prove helps us make some calculations. Um, if you take gamma M of a sum of elements, it's just, if you take the, uh, abs the, 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 the absolute value of gamma M of a bunch of elements, it's just equal to P to the negative M times, times that sum. So that's helpful in calculating. So now we visualize G as the atom. We view each Pn as a principal energy level and each element of, of uh, a given circle is a particular state having principal quantum number given by the shell. The primitive random walk describes a particle that jumps between the electron states of this atom. So I'll go back here just for sake of visualization. So you start here and the probability that you jump here is um, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what the, the, the probability is in just a moment, but you, you can jump into each of these shells. When you jump into the shell, it, it's a uniform. It jumps in a, it, 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 um, the probability is uniform um, in each shell and you can jump between them. If you're here, you can jump back down. You can jump anywhere you like. And of course you have to be able to jump um, at any distance in any step because Otherwise, you'll never get out of that uh, a ball because of the ultimate ultrametric property. So it's necessarily non-local. Um, so here we go. So, so we fix B to be positive and we define X by X tilde an abstract random variable that is uniformly distributed on each circle uh, and with uh, the probability that you jump into the ith circle, the ith energy level, is just p to the b minus one over p i to the b. So this is the probability of jumping into a circle, and the probability then that you stay in um, in the ring of integers is just zero. So the, note that x tilde has a law that's different from the one that we discussed earlier. It generates a primitive abstract. Uh, process S tilde N that's qualitatively different from the one here in, in two ways. So first it describes a particle that jumps with full probability at each time step. 
And second, it defines a law for any positive B and any prime P, which was not the case earlier. Uh, in the case earlier, we couldn't deal with um, we couldn't deal with this case. We weren't able to do that, and uh, so there was no difficulty with having a law that that um, uh, with having um, a, a different law. Once um, we have better techniques now um, for proving this, it it opened up the possibility for dealing with b between zero and one. And so we had to change the law. I changed the law. So, okay. So, um, the primitive process and its generator. Um, let rho x tilde be the probability mass function for the x tilde, and its its characteristic function is given by this formula. And alpha is just some constant. So that's the characteristic function of uh, the PDF, or actually PMF. So it's actually a mass function, of course. Now, x tilde i, let it be a sequence of independently, identically, independent, identically distributed random variables, each with the same distribution as our x tilde. Uh, and let x tilde not be the random variable that takes value bracket zero with probability one. Defined by Sn tilde, once again, the sum, and by S tilde, the abstract stochastic process um, that takes n to S n tilde. Now, for each natural number, for each n in the natural numbers of zero, we denote rho star n to be the probability mass function for the random variable S n tilde. So remember, these are all still for the the primitive process on the on the piadics. So for each natural number n, each element of G, uh, we can explicitly write uh, the probability mass function. We have a formula for it. And that's a formula for it. Uh, now there's a stochastic process that's a model for S tilde in the space of all functions um, on uh, S. And furthermore, for each I and the natural numbers of zero, the random variable XI that acts on paths um, um, where xi plus one omega is just si plus one minus si of omega. This is a model for the xi tilde. And this is just the uh, increments of the process. So the xi are the increments of the process and are independent and identically distributed so that s is a sum of independent identically distributed random variables. Now, Now we come to moment estimates. So in the real setting, uh, the exponent b is two and it's sufficient to calculate the variance. The estimates of the variance of the primitive stochastic process are easily obtained, I should say, in the real setting. And follow immediately from the fact that the increments are independent. Finding sufficient estimates in the QP setting, irrespective of the value of B is more involved. So in the recent work for any number R in zero B and any real number R in zero B and any natural number N, there's a positive constant K so that the expected value of SN of the module of, of the absolute value of SN to the R is less than K to the, k times n to the r over b. And that factor here is critical. Um, so I don't discuss the um, proof of this in the talk, but I can give a little idea of how one does it. You make an explicit calculation um, using the probability mass function that we have. Um, you end up with some discrete sum. Um, and you find that this discrete sum is basically the a Riemann sum approximation of a beta function. Um, and then you approximate um, by approximating the, the beta function. And this is how we, we get this estimate. Um, but all estimates are done only using the, um, the primitive process. And then the scalings um, um, don't change things very much. 
So the Brownian motion in QP has been studied uh, since the early 1990s, a little before actually. Um, and its generator was described even earlier. Um, so we fix a positive real number B and define a multiplication, a multiplication operator M that acts on the schwartz brouhaus space of compactly supported locally constant functions this way. And, and the uh, Vladimirov operator is the unique self extension of the essentially self adjoint operator that acts on any schwartz brouhaus function in this way. So this is our generator. And of course, we can multiply that by a constant, the diffusion constant. So fix sigma to be a positive real number and refer to it as a diffusion constant. The pseudo differential, the pseudo differential equation has as its fundamental solution the function rho, uh, where rho of tx is equal to this infinite sum. Now, the function rho is a probability density function that gives rise to a probability measure p on the score hat space. This measure is concentrated on the set of paths originating at zero. The triple, uh, so we have this triple, right? The, the probability space and the stochastic process. Y is given before, and this triple is the piatic Brownian motion with Vladimirov operator sigma um, delta B as its infinitesimal generator. So what we'll show now is that any Brownian motion with a Vladimirov operator as its infinitesimal generator is a limit of discrete time random walks. And that's the goal. So let X tilde M be the abstract random variable given by the, comp the composite alpha M composed with uh, X tilde. And uh, denote by um, rho xm, the probability density function for x tilde m. So alpha from m, remember this is the map that takes g to gm. All right. This is equal to qp mod zp, and this is equal to qp mod pm. So for each x and qp, um, rho x tilde m of x, m is equal to rho x tilde of x. So this is how we define uh, the, the, so this is the density function um, um, on gm. So we denote by uh, phi x tilde m, the Fourier transform, the characteristic function of rho x tilde m and the domain of phi x tilde m is just p to the negative mzp, which is the Pontryagin dual. So we show that uh, the ex this explicit formula uh, for the um, for the um, characteristic function, and you can always see what's happening, right? With the um, when we take products, you have something that looks like an exponential coming out. So we fix a time scaling tau and we take lambda to be one over tau for each t um, in z for each t varying in zero infinity, we take z tilde tm to be alpha m composed with s tilde of floor of t lambda of m. And we let z tilde m to be the this abstract process. Okay. So denote by rho z tilde m t the probability density function for the random variable and by uh, phi of z tilde m, the Fourier transform or the characteristic function of the um, probability density function. If bracket t delta m is equal to zero, then this just gives you the Dirac measure on GM with support zero. And of course, this is actually given by a function. It's just you know, in the discrete case, it's just given by integration against this function. And then it becomes a Dirac measure as n tends to infinity. So Fourier transforms take convolution to multiplication and rho z tilde um, m of t um, comma bracket m of x is just equal to this convolution. 
Um, and this implies, of course, that the characteristic function of the, uh, the sum is then going to be um, this product. And uh, of course, uh, as n tends to infinity, um, we have that, um, I'll highlight the result. That the characteristic function tends to the x this exponential uniformly in y as n tends to infinity. Now, now take tau to be a time scaling given for each m in the natural numbers with zero by tau m is equal to alpha over sigma p to the negative mb. A uh, sigma was the diffusion constant. And alpha is just some, is just some constant um, that's, um, that's just a function of P and B. And we showed it earlier. Okay. Now take Yoda to be a sequence of spatiotemporal embeddings of G into QP with time scaling tau and with a sequence of spatiotemporal and uh, with a sequence of spatio and temporal embeddings given by the gamma M defined above. So each spatiotemporal embedding given by uh, be given by Yoda acts on the primitive stochastic process. How? In this way. So why? To find y t, y t m tilde is gamma m of s tilde of um, the floor of t times one over the time scaling. Um, and of course, this is the same story as in the real case exactly. Um, now we can estimate the moments for this random variable. Uh, for this, um, for why we can ex we can estimate the moments for for the we can estimate the moments for um, y t m tilde um, well for each t. So the following moment estimates for the process ensure that for each m it, it has a model with paths in the score hut space, and then the uniform tightness of the measures associated, and that the and that the um, and, it, and the uniform tightness of the measures associated to the family of processes parameterized by M. So the proposition is that there's a constant C such that for any T in zero infinity, the expected value, and I should, the expected value with respect to the measures given, um, given by the uh, mth embedding is less than C times T to the R over B. So, this, another proposition we have is that the sequence of measures, uh, that there is a sequence of measures so that for each M in the natural numbers of zero, this triple is just a model for the Y tilde of M. And this, this, this comes from the, um, the moment estimates by the Chensov criterion the, the, or the Kolmogorov Chensov theorem. So further, furthermore, the sequence PM is a sequence of uniformly tight probability measures. Now note that in the previous work, um, require, the previous work required the epoch to be a sequence of time points in zero T where T was a positive real number. And furthermore, the stronger estimates we have allowed, uh, we have uh, the, the stronger estimates have allowed us to prove a uniform tightness when the time interval is unbounded. Okay. So the sequence of uh, stochastic processes is a sequence of processes that for each M correspond to random walks on the embedded grids that jump only at the time points that are positive multiples of tau m. So we first- Time reminder, David, oh, thank you, uh, thank you. you reach 50 minutes, okay. Great, almost ready. So we proved the local constancy property of the paths, and then we showed that the measures PM converge to P in the weak star sense. Um, and so uh, the, the embedded processes really just stay on the grid and only jump at the given time points. So if we let HR be the set of all restricted histories, 
with Apex and Zero Infinity. Uh, these are the histories that are restricted to have roots that are finite sequences, that, that are finite sequences of balls in QP. But the intersection of two balls in QP with non-root trivial intersection is again a ball. And that implies that the subset, uh, that the set of all cylinder sets, uh, the set of all uh, restricted history, uh, sorry, that the set of cylinder sets with restricted histories is a pi system that generates a sigma algebra of the cylinder sets. We show then that if H is a history, then the, um, then the finite dimensional distributions converge. And so uh, we now have that, that if Yoda is a sequence of spatio-temporal embeddings of the primitive discrete, sorry, we, we, we suppose that, so suppose that Yoda is a sequence of spatio-temporal embeddings of the primitive discrete time process S with space scale delta and time scale tau satisfying that delta m is equal to p to the negative m and tau m is equal to alpha over sigma p to the negative m over b. Let p be the measures on the Skorohod space associated to the process y. For each m in n0, p m, let pm be the measure on the Skorohod space associated to the process yoda m of s. The sequence of measures converged in the weak star sense in this Skorohod space to the measure p. So this is the result of the paper. And I should mention that the relationship between the space and time scales is similar in the piadic and real settings. In the piadic setting with exponent, with the exponent of the Vladimirov operator equal to, um, equal to B, the relationship between the distance and time scales is that delta M over B tau M tends to sigma over alpha. And the current paper extends the results where B was restricted n one infinity. Furthermore, the convergence is a weak star convergence. Um, furthermore, the, weak, uh, the convergence in the new work is the weak star convergence in the space of bounded measures um, over infinite time intervals rather than the weak star convergence in the space of bounded measures on compact time intervals, uh, on, on squared space with compact time intervals. So we've extended the results. The current, result, uh, current approach is robust. Although we have only discussed the piadic setting, there is no obstruction to modifying our proofs to the setting of paths valued in any non-Archimedean local field. And in fact, the same proof extends to the full generality uh, where, uh, of, of Radarajan's 1997 work where the paths are valued in a vector space that is finite dimensional uh, over a finitely generated division algebra of a, over a non-Archimedean local field. So um, we can handle all uh, cases in the current proof. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, David. Um, are there any questions or remarks? Uh, we have about five, six.